Good morning. Greetings in the name of Jesus. Uh, my title for the message this morning is probably not a very popular topic to speak about, but uh, I titled it The Origin of Evil. And it's actually a three point message. I want to bring you three points. But the first one is the origin of evil. And you know, the question has been asked many a time where people ask, why would God allow bad things to happen to his people? Why would a loving God allow these things to happen? You know, the, the questions are asked many times. Why is there so much sorrow? Why is there so much uh, sickness? Why is there so much war and so much evil in the world? And then they ask the question, why? If God is loving, why are these things happening? Or how did evil begin in the world that was created by a perfectly good God who is full of wisdom, full of love? Why did he allow evil to exist and spread so much? You know, today it seems to people that uh, evil is it's out of control, and it, and it seems to people that God is not in control of it anymore. You know, we heard the story of the shooting in uh, San Bernardino, California, and after that they placed an article in the front page news, uh, and they were say, telling people not to pray because they were saying, God is not fixing this. And so it seems to people that God is out of control. God is not in control of the things that are happening. And you know, it is true, there's a lot of bad things happening, there's a lot of evil in the world today, but why, where did it originate? Where did it begin? And so, you know, people are trying to understand and trying to figure out uh, why is it? Where did it begin? And so, many a times, uh, people ask the questions, and I myself have asked the questions, why? You know, sometimes you see a, a person getting cancer and it's a Christian, He's, uh, he loves the Lord. And then a question comes, well, God, why would you allow this to happen to this person? And you know, I think there's an answer to this, but there's also a solution to it. And the solution is G Jesus Christ. But I think there's an answer uh, to these questions. Um, I want to turn to Ezekiel 28, the chapter 28 there. Uh, before I go there, you know, before God created uh, humans, he created angels. And if you read the Bible, um, you have to conclude that he must have created millions of angels. And then he created humans. And he created them perfect. Absolutely faultless, perfect. He created the angels. And they were made perfect. He created... Adam and Eve, they were perfect. Everything that God has ever created is perfect. There's no fault. He can't find fault in it. Everything that God created was perfect. But where did evil begin then? And so, you know, if you look at the planets and the stars and the trees and all of these things, God created them also, but there was a difference. You know, when God created... Uh, the angels and human beings, he created them with a free will. But when he created the stars and the planets and all of those things, they were created in the, and God gave the order as to how they were to operate. So they did not have a free will. So God set them there. God flown the, the earth in space there. You know, people have, uh, for many years, scientists have, tried to figure out uh, where the earth is resting up on and, and somehow concluded that uh, there's a big uh, foundation or an elephant and that's where the, the, the planet uh, earth is resting on or other people say there, there was a, there's a big atlas uh, holding the, the planet and so people are trying, scientists have tried to figure out things but you know, uh, but 4,000 years ago there was a man in the Bible, he knew it all. Uh, Job said God created the, the planets and he says there, and God hanging up the earth upon nothing. 
So it's just floating in space there. And God created all of these planets, all the stars, and he gave the order as to how they were uh, to operate. And you know, for over 6,000 years, they have worked in perfect harmony, everything as God had said they were to operate. You know, today, uh, they have telescopes. They can look into the sky and, and, and watch the moon and the stars and all of these things. And you know, they make calendars and they write the dates and the sunset and the sun setting on it, and it's accurate for the whole year. They can calculate it. That's how precise they are operating. And God gave that order. And that's how they have been operating for over 6,000 years. And it's incredible, you know, to know the time. You know, they will tell you today the sun will set at 5.45 or so, and it's accurate. Because God had given the order as to how they would operate, and that's how they operate. You know, trees, they don't have a free will. You know, the Bible says every tree, every plant will uh, produce after its own kind, and the tree will grow up to a certain height, and that's where it stays. They, don't, they do not have a free will. But the angels, and we as human beings, we were created with a free will, and that's why I want to go to... Ezekiel 28 there, I want to read a passage there, and then also in Isaiah chapter 14. Uh, Ezekiel 28 verse, and starting in verse 12, it says, Son of man, raise a lamentation over the king of Tyre, and say to him, Thus says the Lord God, You were the signet of perfection, full of wisdom, in perfect in beauty. Here we see that Lucifer was created full of wisdom, perfect in beauty. And then it says, You were anoint the anointed guardian cherub. See, when God created the angels, there was one angel. He was a special angel. He was to have the rule over all the other angels. And he was the anointed guardian cherub. And then it says, I place you where on the holy mountain of God, in the midst of the stones of fire you, you walk. And then it says in verse 15, it says, You were blameless in your ways from the day you were created. So Lucifer was created. He was created perfect. It says here, you were created blameless from the day you were created. So God made everything perfect. God never created anything that was evil. And then it says, Till unrighteousness was found in you. And then verse 17 it says, Your heart was proud because of your beauty. You corrupted your wisdom for the sake of your splendor. I cast you down to the ground. I expose you before kings to feast their eyes upon you. You know, he was given a position but he was not content. He exalted him above God. He was not content with the position that he was given. And so it says there, because your heart was proud because of your beauty. And then if you go over into Isaiah chapter 14, uh, starting in verse 12 there, just a few chapters back. Uh, Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12 there, it says, How you are fallen from heaven, O day star. Son of Don. In another translation it says, uh, Lucifer. How you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer. And it means the shining one, the light bearer. How you are cut down to the ground, you who laid the nations low. You said in your heart, and then notice how he says these things. Each time he says, I, I will. You said in your heart, I will ascend to the heaven. Above the stars of God, I will set my throne on high. I will sit on the mount of assembly in the, in the far reaches of the earth. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will make myself like the most high. Since it's all about me, it's about I, 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 I will. He was not content where God had placed him. He said, I want to be God. 
and he began to have thoughts in his mind. These were evil thoughts, and you know, eventually he wanted to be God. And then it says, but you are brought down to Sheol, to the far reaches of the pit. There we have the origin of evil. That's where evil began. Evil did not begin with the human, with human beings. Evil began with the angel Lucifer because he was not content with the position that he was given. He exalted himself. He, he let pride get into his head. And so that's where evil originated. That's the origin of evil. And then it says in, in Revelation verse, uh, chapter 12, verse 4, there it says, And he swept, when he was cast down out of heaven, he swept a third of the angels with him down to the ground. And so they were cast out of heaven. And you know, that's where evil began. And you know, and then we know, uh, as we know, that Satan uh, tempted Eve, and then sin came into uh, hum the human race. And that's why there's so much evil. It's not because of God, it's not God's fault, but it's because God created us with a free will. We have the choice to obey God or to disobey God. And so God could have, uh, just like he created the planets and, and all the trees and the plants and given the order, he could have created us like that and and, and, and put Adam and Eve in the, in the garden there and, and just tell them you can do whatever you want, you can eat of every tree you want. And, but then he would never know if they would obey him. So God created them with a free will. So they, it was their choice to obey or to disobey God. You know, when, uh, and it was not that easy. It was not that hard. You know, there was lots of other trees in the garden there. There was many trees there. If God would have said, there's a hundred trees in the garden there that I don't want you to eat of, there's only one tree that you can eat of. Or if he would have said, uh, tell, tell him, yeah, there's, there's a lot of trees there, but there's only one that you can eat of. No, God said there's many trees there. You can eat of all of them, except there's only one tree that I don't want you to eat of. Why did God do that? Because God wanted to give us a free will so that we could voluntarily uh, make a choice to obey God or to d disobey God. And it's the same with the child. Like, uh, how would you know if your child would obey you? If you tell them you can do anything you want, anything and everything you want to do, go ahead and do it, you would never discover if your child was obedient. But if you tell them, you know, you can do many things. You can do everything except one thing I don't want you to do. Then you will find out if your child will be obedient. And you know, that's, God has created us with a free will. You know, we can force our children to obey us. But there's no joy in it. You know, a husband can force her wife, his wife to respect him or obey him or he can beat his wife into submission but there's no joy in it they live a miserable life a husband uh, might be able to do that but there's no joy in it but if the wife chooses to respect her husband out of free will then there's joy they share their happiness their joy and their happiness and then the husband will react in a loving way and that's what God wanted God wants to share his joy and his happiness with us and with the angels that's why he had to cre uh, create them with the free will so we can choose whether we want to obey him or not and that's how God will know if we love him Jesus said if you love me keep my commandments he says why do you call me Lord Lord and do not do the things that I tells you to. So God has created us with a free will and we have the choice to obey God or disobey God. And then, you know, if our children obey us out of their free will, if they chose to obey us, it's a joy to us. 
John once said, uh, I have no greater joy than to know that my children walk in obedience. And you know, that's a joy. Then, we, then there's joy. And the same with God. He gives us the free will. He gives us the choice to obey or disobey. You know, but that's, that's the origin of evil. And that's why we, uh, Paul says in, in Ephesians 6 verse 12, a uh, familiar passage there, it says, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic power, powers over this present darkness, against spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. You know, when Lucifer was cast down, when he disobeyed, and he, came, he became Satan, and all his angels that were cast down with him, they became the demons. And you know, that's why Paul says, we do not fight against flesh and blood, we do not fight against human beings, but there is evil forces in the heavenly places. Why? Because they were cast out, they disobeyed God, and that's the origin of evil, and that's why there's so much trouble, there's so much evil in the world today. That's where evil originated. But you know, God is still in control. It's not that God is out of control. You know, you might ask, is God not interested in helping? Yes, He is. But the next point I want to make is God makes evil work for good. You know, many evil things are happening in the world. There's people that do evil things. They will do evil things to one another. But God can make a fool out of Satan. The very things that that Satan means for bad, God can use that for good to accomplish his purpose. And we have an example of that in Genesis uh, chapter 50, verse 20. Uh, this is the story of uh, Jacob, uh, Joseph, and his brothers, where one day uh, the older brothers, they were tending sheep out in the field there somewhere in uh, one day, uh, Jacob sent Joseph to shack up on them and see how things were going. And we know the story there because of the colorful coat that uh, Jacob had made for uh, Joseph. They hated him. And so when they see him coming, they were discussing how they would uh, wanted to kill Joseph. And so that's what they decided. They were going to kill him. But one brother said, no, let's not kill him. Let's rather sell him. So they threw him in a pit. And then when the Ishmaelites came by, they, they sold him, and they, he was taken into Egypt. And then they killed an animal, and they took his coat off, and they dipped it in the blood of that animal, and they sent that coat to their father. And uh, his father concluded that Joseph was dead. In his mind, there was no doubt uh, Joseph had been killed by, by an animal. And so it was an evil thing that they did. It was evil what they did. But you know then, in uh, Genesis chapter 50 verse 20, uh, this is was what Joseph is saying to his brother. He says there, as for you, you meant it for, meant evil against me, but God meant it for good. See, there we see it. <clears throat> God makes evil work for good. He says, as for you, you meant it, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good to bring it about that many people should be kept alive as they are today. You know, there was a famine coming, a famine of seven years, and God was preparing a way, and God was using Joseph to, to carry out this plan that he had to save many people. You know, it was an evil thing that uh, his brothers did, but God meant it for good. So God makes evil work for good. Even though God did not create evil, but God makes evil work for good. And you know, we have many examples of that. We have many testimonies of uh, people today uh, that will, where we can see how God makes evil work for good. I have heard many testimonies of how bad things that happen to people have worked out for their own good. Uh, one testimony that I heard of a man, 
Um, he was a man, he was a Christian, he was very close to God, he, was, uh, he loved God, and he was uh, going to church, study. So he loved God, but as uh, his business prospered over the time, he started to drift away from God. And so the elders of that church, they would constantly go and try to talk to this man and, and, and try to reconcile him back to God. But he was not willing. His business was prospering, and so he drifted farther and farther away from God. And so they tried and tried and tried, and nothing happened. Till one day, a poisonous snake bit one of his uh, son, the youngest of the, their three sons. A poisonous snake uh, bit him. And then when doctors had given up all hope, this man called for one of the elders of the church, uh, to come and pray for the son that was bitten by the snake. And so the elder did come, and he did pray uh, for the family. <clears throat> but he did not exactly pray uh, what he had requested uh, them to, him to pray for. Uh, I don't know ex uh, the exact words how he prayed, but he prayed something like this. He said, when he started to pray, he said, God, I thank you for sending the snake to bite the son. It says, Know that they have learned a lesson, heal their son, and grant that they may never need snakes again so that they will stay close to you. That's how he prayed. And then the man was reconciled back to God, and then the child was he uh, healed. You know, would you say, uh, would you say that uh, That the snake bite was an evil thing, or was, or was it a good thing? It was an evil thing, but God made it work for good. Later on, that man truly could say, that snake bite was good for me because it brought me back to God, whereas before I was drifting away farther and farther, but no, this thing has brought me back to God because he realized he might die. And all of a sudden he realized <coughs> that God loved him so much that he allowed us this thing to happen to see if he would uh, come back, and he did come back. So that's how we see that God makes evil work for good. And you know, there's many other uh, stories. Uh, one uh, lady, he, she prayed for the salvation of her husband for 34 years. You know, this couple was well off. They were traveling a lot. They, they were very well off. And she prayed and prayed because she was burdened about uh, the soul of her husband. And she wanted him to get saved. But the husband was not interested in God. He did his things and he was just not interested. And, and so the lady started to ask the church to pray for the salvation of her husband. And you know, after some time, all of a sudden, he got sick, and he got very sick, and he, he developed a tumor in his head, and they operated on him, and he got uh, better for a bit, and then it got worse again, and he suffered terribly. But then, after a while, he finally, he gave his heart to the Lord, he accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as his personal Savior. But then, shortly after that, he passed away. So there... The lady tried, prayed for 34 years, and he, she never succeeded. But then, when God allowed him to get sick, finally he realized, my days are coming to the end. I better get saved now. And uh, the, the gospel had been shared with him many a times. And, you know, later on, uh, one time <coughs> we knew this uh, couple personally. So later on, sometimes when we visit that uh, lady, she told us that he had asked her husband if he would have a choice, what he would choose, to be like, to be healthy, like he was before, or to get sick, to get cancer, and be saved. And he had told her that he would, uh, if he had a choice, he would choose to get cancer and be saved. So God makes evil work for good, and He does it even today. You know, He would, He will allow things to come our way. Sometimes we as people, when evil things or bad things come our way, uh, people say, well, God doesn't love me, or 
If he loved me, he would not allow these things to happen to me. You know, it's just the other way around. God loves us so much, if we drift away from him, he will allow things to come on our way to bring us back to him. He has a purpose in it. Very often, that's the purpose. You know, financial struggle, sickness, many other things. God will uh, use those things, allow them to happen. God did not create evil, but God will make them work for good. You know, parents, <clears throat> sometimes a dad lives in sin. Then all of a sudden, one of their children, one of their teenagers start to rebel. And you know, the first thing we ask, we pray that God would uh, save that teenager, that he would obey. But you know, oftentimes, God will allow these things to happen because there's a sin in the parent's life. And you know, when the, when the, the sin is confessed and the dad reconciles to God, then often the child will come back to God too. So God will allow these things. And I'm not saying that that's always the case. If you have children, you know, children sometimes obey. I'm not saying that's always the case, but sometimes that is the case. And you know, we should never ask, why me? Why does this happen to me? We should ask. We should examine ourselves. Is there sin in our lives? Could it be because of the things that I'm doing? You know, sometimes uh, we face uh, bad things because of bad uh, choices or unwise choices that we have made. But a lot of times, God will allow these things to happen to us to bring us closer to Him. You know, God loves us so much. He doesn't want anyone to perish. And so He will allow these things to come our way so that we will come back to Him, just like a shepherd, like uh, in those days, uh, uh, shepherd, <clears throat> sometimes the sheep would wander away, and, uh, and sometimes the shepherd would break the leg of that sheep. And then the sheep would come, and, and the shepherd would go and just uh, put that uh, leg or that bone in place and just rub it. And, you know, from that moment on, the sheep would stay very close to the, to the shepherd. And that's how God uh, deals with us. You know, the Bible says, every child God says that I love, I will chasten. So evil is not always that bad. Well, evil is bad, but it can do, can be good. <clears throat> God can make it work for good. But God has given us that choice, and that's the next point I want to make, the power of choice. You know, as I said before, that God has created us with the free will, and there's, uh, and we have the choice. You know, the power of choice. You know, many a times we ask, what is sin? Well, sin is disobeying God. Disobeying God is sin, and sin is what separate us, separates us from God. So God gives us a choice. We have the power, as uh, Pedro was sharing early on, that... Uh, about Moses, that God had called him to lead the Israelites out of Egypt, and Moses told God, well, I cannot speak. Why wouldn't you send someone else? You know, there he had a choice to obey God or disobey God. So God gives that choice to us. In uh, Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 15, we have an example there. Uh, it says there, he says, See, I have set before you today life and good, that and evil. See, God says, I set that before you. You have the freedom. You have the choice. You can choose. You can choose life or you can choose that. And then in uh, verse 19, he says, I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessing and curse, therefore choose life. See, first of all, he says, I have set before you life. You know, God has chosen us, the Bible tells us in Ephesians 1, that God has chosen us to be his children. Before he created the foundation of the world, he chose to accept us as his children through Jesus Christ. He has chosen us. Another part says, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. So he says, I give you the freedom. I give you the choice. 
to choose life. I have chosen you. It's there. You can have it if you want it. You make the choice. He says, if you accept, in uh, John 3, verse 16, where it says, For God so loved the world that whoever would believe in him would not perish but have eternal life. So God loved us so much, and he has chosen us, but he says, it's your choice. You, wanna, you want eternal life, or you want that? It's your choice. He will never force anyone to accept it, and you know, it will never be God's fault that anyone will go to hell. Any man that will go to hell will go there because of his choice that he made. <clears throat> so he says, I give you the choice. And you know, what a tremendous power there is in choice. You know, John 1 verse 12, it says, all those that accept me I give the power to become my children. I give them the choice, the power of choice to become the children of God. If you will believe, you can be a child of God, but the choice is you. He says, I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death. And so he says, there it is. You take it or you reject it. And then the next thing he says, blessing and curse. You know, when these things come our way, <clears throat> whatever it might be, trials or different things, you know, we have the choice. If God is drawing us, if that's why God allows these things, we have the, ch the choice to obey and accept blessing, or we can reject and therefore chose the curse. You know, sometimes I say that the uh, uh, we human beings are so stubborn that God sometimes almost has to break a leg or an arm before we come to Him. But it doesn't have to be that, that way. So there we have the choice, the power of choice. It is our choice to accept, to obey God or disobey, to accept, to choose life or to choose that. That lays within the power of our choice. We have the freedom to do that. In Ephesians 1 verse 4, he says, Even as he has, he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him in love. He has predestined us for adoption of, as sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will. That was, that was his will. It was God's will to accept us as his children. But now he says, I lay it before you. You can have it or you can reject it. So the power, the, the, the freedom is ours. You know, when you, I often think about uh, the love of God and how patient he is. You know, sometimes he has so much patience uh, with us. Sometimes a person is sick, sick for years, and God is trying to get him back to him. God is trying to get his attention. You know, oftentimes if he would yield, if he would respond, uh, we wouldn't have to suffer so much as we often do. But God is so loving. You know, one thing that I think often about is about the angels. You know, even as God, how merciful God is. You know, the thing that Pedro was sharing this morning, too, that even after Moses... Uh, murdered. He killed a man and then he ran away and God went after him and God used him. You know, God is loving. But the angels, we read in uh, in Second Peter uh, chapter 2 and also in Jude 6, 1 verse 6 that God did not spare the angels. You know, when they rebelled they were cast out, and it says there that they are reserved in chains to the day of judgment, and they will be thrown in a lake of fire. They had no second chance. You know, we have, even though as when we fall, when we drift away, God forgives. If we confess, he is true and righteous to forgive us of all our sins and to cleanse us from all our, our unrighteousness. You know, what a loving God we have. 
It's not that God is not loving us when bad things come our way. It is because God loves us so much. He wants us to come back to him. So we should never forget that. The angels did not have that choice. Once they sinned, they were done. They are destined to hell. There was no second chance there. Whereas we have forgiveness of sin. Even after we are born again, if we fall, we can come back to God. And God will very often times let things happen to us so that we would come back to him, that we would give attention and come back to God. So there we have it, the origin of evil. And God makes evil work for good and the power of choice. Let's remember that. You know, sometimes if we understand these things a little better, then it makes more sense to us. As I said before, uh, <clears throat> I know there was a time when I visited a man. He was a godly man. He loved the Lord. And then he came down with cancer, and he suffered incredibly. It was hard to even watch him lay in there and just suffer there. And then I asked the question, well, God, why? He loves you. He shares the gospel with other people. Why would you allow these things to happen? You know... I ask the question, in, in some of the things we cannot understand. You know, God's ways are so much higher than ours, there are some things that we will never understand. We will never fully understand God on this side of heaven. But God, you know, and sometimes we, uh, people will pray for a sick person, and it seems like God is not healing them. And then the question comes again, well, your words say that if we pray, believing, he will do it. And then we pray believing and nothing happens. You know, one thing we can be certain of, if we pray for something and does, God does not do it, if we pray for the healing of someone and God does not heal that person, then we can be sure that God has a reason for it. And then we should leave it at that. Sometimes ago I, I read of a the couple in England and they had the gift of uh, praying for people and healing people. And it uh, said that uh, many people were healed by them. In fact, it said that more people were healed by their prayers than by the doctors of England. But this couple, they were sick all their lifetime. You know, for human beings to understand that, it, it doesn't make sense. But these people were sick all the time. They were always sick, yet they were praying for people and people were getting healed. Why? This couple knew that God had a purpose for it. And they said, God is keeping us sick to keep us humble because so many people are getting healed. You know, there's a real danger that we will let that get to our heads and become proud. You know, pride is a very dangerous thing. You know, sometimes God will allow these things to keep us, hungry, uh, keep us away from pride. You know, pride is what made Lucifer Satan. And so they, they believed that it was God's doing to keep them humble. And so you should always ask, why is this happening? Not why is this happening to me or just ask God to take it away from me, but rather examine ourselves where we stand with God. How is our relationship with God? How have we drifted away? Is God perhaps trying to get us back to him? And so that's the question that we should ask. So I don't know where you are at today, if you're a child of God or not. You know, God says the choice is yours. You can choose life. If you want to, you can have it. You know, the Bible says today is the day of salvation. Today you have the choice. You don't know if you'll have the choice to tomorrow, but today you have the choice. Or if you're a child of God and you have drifted away from God and there's things in your life, I would just challenge you to, to examine yourself. Is it because of something that's in my life that shouldn't be there? God wants to have a relationship with us. God wants to share his joy and his happiness with us. That's why he created us. He wanted to have a relationship with someone. And so in order to keep us close to him, he will allow things to happen to bring us back to him, but then it is our choice to choose to accept it or to reject it.
you know, some, uh, Peter tells us in First Peter 4, uh, he says, <clears throat> when you face these trials, these fiery trials, he said, don't think as if something strange is happening to you. It's just to prove you. It's just to prove your faith. You know, sometimes these trials, uh, these evil things that come our way, they come to us to prove our faith, to build character in us. You know, if we face no trials, if we face no evil, then we, will, we won't build character, our faith won't grow. We need these things to grow in our faith, and you know, it builds character in our lives. You know, God knows us, God knows how to deal with us. You know, I know when I first got saved, there was some temptations that were coming my way, and I had a hard time. I really struggled, but today I look back, those temptations that I faced then, today they are nothing. But God allows the things as he knows we can bear them. The Bible tells us the fact that God will not allow things to happen, anything beyond what we can bear. That's the promise of God that we have. So God has a purpose in it. So let's remember the origin of evil. God makes evil for work for good and the power of choice. And that's the privilege that we have and what a loving God we have. He's so much patience with us. So as I said, the choice is yours. Whatever, if the Lord is speaking to you in any way, it is your choice. The power lays within your choice to choose life for that or blessing or curse. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I come before you, Lord. I just want to thank you so much for choosing us uh, to be your children, Lord. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that you do not deal with us according to our sins, Lord. I thank you for your mercies that are new every morning, Lord. Heavenly Father, would you help us to realize that sometimes uh, those things that come our way, uh, you're probably using them to bring us back to you, Lord. And Father, I just pray, Lord, that you would seal this message in our hearts. And I pray that we would obey, Lord that we would chose, that we would realize the power, the, the power of choice that we have, that you have created us with a free will, Lord, and that we now have the choice to obey you or to disobey you, Lord. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your love, and I thank you for choosing us, and I thank you for giving us that privilege, for giving us that free will to choose or to reject, Lord. Heavenly Father, I pray, Lord, that we would truly examine ourselves and to see Lord and come close to you Lord for we know that you long to have a fellowship with us a relationship with us just like we uh, long to have a relationship with our own children Lord and so we know that we understand that how you are longing to have a re relationship with us and so Lord I just pray Lord that whatever comes our way that we would always uh, examine ourselves and see if you have a purpose in it in Jesus' name, amen.